Okay, we are live. There is no one here right now except for me and Anne Margaret. And we are going to have a good time. I never needed a lot of people to have a good time. But let's see if anyone shows up. Blue, how are you? Great to see you. Thank you so much for hanging out. Mike, how's it going? Good to see you. So you guys found me. That's always great, always encouraging. And we have Colette. How are you, Colette? I'm so glad you're here. And that is great. And so, uh, so Mike Deloach, you're still in Ohio right now. Are you on business? So uh, we have Blue from Long Island. We have Mike from Atlanta, Colette from Wisconsin. We have Nameless from California. How are you, Nameless? Good to see you. I'm so glad you're here. We have Mr. Steve Lang all the way from the UK. Good to see you. We also have Mr. Steve Leahy from Ohio. Great to see you, sir. And so that's so cool. So I uh, basically didn't even give an alert because um, it's kind of, uh, you know, today was like one of those days where I was very busy in the studio. But it seems like the, the time just... Uh, Blue, so to speak, you know? Oh, airbrushing a t-shirt, very cool, Nameless, very cool. And so this is great. Um, so what we're going to do, we're gonna pretend this is an airbrush painting in India ink. And you might say, well, Tim, why are you gonna pretend? Well, the thing is, we want to work it as an underpainting first. And uh, so, this way we'll have a beautiful, a beautiful tonal structure. A lot like what uh, the late 19th century French academic painters love to do. But we're doing this with pastel, which is quite different. And uh, Mr. Luch says, Timothy, if you paint it, they will come. <laughs> that's true. I hope that's true. Hey, Mr. John Payne. Gloria, how are you? Great to see you. I'm so glad you're here. And we have Mr. Clutch Pyro, which is Patrick, all the way from Wisconsin. And that's amazing. No, Patrick, yes, he's originally from Wisconsin. Now he lives in Massachusetts. Hey, cats, how you doing? Great to see you from California. So glad you're here. So that is great. Wow, Clutch, thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate that. That means so much to me. Uh, thank you so very much, honestly. It really comes in handy at the end of the month. So thank you so much for that. So I'm so glad you're here, Kat, as well. And uh, so, yeah, so so glad Gloria's here from New Jersey. Actually, she's originally from New York City, now living in New Jersey. And so we have uh, Total Pain, John Payne, hails from upstate New York with beautiful time of year to be there, huh? So I'm sure you're enjoying that. So what I'm going to do is, at first, I think my remaining job is to make sure that my drawing is uh, on the up and up, right? So I want to make sure I don't want to work on a drawing that's subpar, <coughs> that's just going to mess up my whole painting from start to finish, so I don't want that. So I'm just going to come in here, just reinforce some of these things. Now what I want to do is I want to hit it with the eyes, nose, and mouth stencil that I made, and we're just going to put this here. And so I'm going to start with the detail mixture, very light. Now when I say the detail mixture very light, it's going to be four drops of detail mixture with about six drops of water. You know, Raul, how you doing? Great to see you. Wow, very nice. And uh, let's see. So Patrick with the Super Chat sticker, that is so cool. And so let me go ahead and so I want to put this here. I'm going to load my Extreme Patriot Arrow. Best airbrush in the world. Okay. Um, let me go ahead and put that on 
believe it or not, this is the first airbrushing I'm doing all day. It's like a record. But I was doing other stuff in the studio. So let's see. So one, two, three, four drops. And then we're going to go six drops of water. That's crazy. Let's try that. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I am getting in a resurgence of orders on the inks. I think the 20% off really did well. I'm having, uh, I'm having a hard time keeping the inventory going, but that's such a wonderful thing. So I am not complaining, that's for sure. Okay, so I have my airbrush all loaded and let go. And let me get this out of the way. Put this over here. And now we need to just line this up. And I definitely want to line up those nostrils. I think that's the main thing that I'm really concerned with at this juncture. Remember you want to put, well since these are small areas you're not going to have much underspray here, but I just want to make sure I get, get those nostrils on the money. Okay, and right here. Alright, so always test your airbrush out before you okay so it's it's really interesting I cleaned out my airbrush last night and for some reason there was some residual water there must have been so and that could be right in the nozzle so that's something you always want to test your airbrush first you know and let's see Oh, how cool is that? That is so fantastic. Live stream from the 50s. I'd like to see that. That's a good thing during inflation. Yes, definitely, my friend. But gas has gone down a whole dollar here in New Jersey. So I was actually pretty happy with that. I'm not going to hit the eyes. I mean, the eyebrows. I just want to get some of the tricky areas right now. So good to see you Colette, how are you feeling? And be careful you might get some build up, build up here. But still, when you're doing this kind of stencil work, always make sure that you are still paying attention to the one second rule. There's ever a reason not to do the one second rule. It's like, it's like no days off. All right, let's lift this up. I just want to have some kind of basic kind of outline see how that helps it helps a lot just a little bit goes a long way so now what I want to do is I want to work on her face and I want to come in with the white mixture and the white mixture is also available on my website it's a dilution a special dilution of Drew Blair's 5050 illustration white and I mean the man is amazing he helped develop that and I'm just like flabbergasted. I tried every single ink and watercolor and everything to work with my technique and Drew Blair's stuff was the only stuff that did it. Nothing else really erased correctly. And I was like, oh boy, okay. So that's basically what has to happen. And let's see. Oh yes, Colette's new eyes, right? That's fantastic. So, uh, so, so glad everyone's here. Thank you so much for hanging out. Now what we want to do is we want to get the uh, face only stencil. And that means, of course, 
the face only. I know, it's uh, very cryptic. Uh, let's see, let's come over here. Because I want to put in the white of the face, but I don't want to get overspray. See, the whole thing with airbrush is that, you know, it's all about, you know, avoiding it. If your whole life is avoiding overspray, that's it, you know, it's, that should be like a lesson. You know, okay, today's lesson, avoid overspray, see you tomorrow. That's actually a huge lesson. It could be just that. I like that. Now I'm going to get my old school airbrush. Old school, right? Okay, but before I do that, let's get rid of some of this excess pencil lines. You still want to see the pencil lines, but you don't want them to be shouting. You want them to be Cayete, Cayete pencil lines. right now let's see any comments here what kind of paper this is a uh, pastel paper by Dale Rowney your favorite paper company and mine they are a friend of the channel love those guys they make me happy um, so definitely Dale Rowney is definitely and Dale Rowney also uh, now owns Canson. They bought their butts. So that's good. All right. So let's get that other airbrush Very cool airbrush. I this is the Badger 100 G as in uh, Gangster it's an old airbrush an older model, but it kicks butt and uh, Can't go wrong with that, right? So I'm gonna borrow this cap and we're going to try and put in the white mixture where is that white mixture so if anyone ever wants to buy any badger equipment uh, you know parts and anything use the code Timothy PSA that's a special code from me that gives you 15% off put that in your in your uh, checkout and you'll be happy and and Badger will be happy and I'll be happy because I like Badger how can you not like Badger right all right so white mixture dun, dun, dun. Ooh, I kind of have two white mixtures going here let's see come over here shake it up you have to shake up the white mixture because it's the Drew Blair uh, 5050 illustration white. That one's not open. Let's go with this one best. So this is basically what it looks like, the white mix. Pretty cool. Mike says, you regularly hand out your stencils. Do you have any thoughts on using plotters like Cricut cutters and laser printers for large complex sets? Yeah, definitely. It's definitely uh, it's definitely something that uh, is an advantage to you. So definitely, you know, like uh, a, a cricket or something like that. Now there's a huge learning curve. If you take my courses, I mean, I basically go over that. I've mastered that thing. So, but I can definitely tell you that is something that will pay huge dividends in your art. But then again, you know, just because you know them is like, you know, how to make, you know, really, how to make the right stencils for the job, you know, that's, that's not easy. And it has a lot to do with a lot of digital work, uh, Mr. Mike, you know, but definitely, uh, that's a very important, important skill to have, whether you're doing airbrush, pastel, anything. So yeah, definitely. First time I seen it happen was when uh, that one gentleman did that one painting 
uh, that one video with uh, airbrush action when he did the, the dollar bill on the motorcycle that was just out of this world so I'm gonna be about six inches away see that about six inches away now Tim you're doing pastel why would you do this because I initially want things to come forward and back I want to set a precedence and by setting that precedence that's when things will really ramp up you know you're a sculptor right you know you're also a painter but you're also a sculptor so you want to start getting a feel for a, for three dimensions there's no way out of it I mean it's just really important so that's why I I'll even come in with the white pastel I mean with the white 50-50 uh, illustration white underpainting in the beginning but it's going to be a very diluted very weak Last night in my group class, we went over the landmark anatomical forms uh, in the human face. And just by teaching that class last night, I learned so much. It was unbelievable. Just by, by sharing it with you guys, it, it really makes a difference. Just like right here, there is called a uh, jowl fat right here in the corner of the mouth that causes that shadow at the corner of the mouth I did not know that before this weekend and you know what it's changing the way I see and over here you have the mental fat right here I know mental it has nothing to do with the brain but it's called the mental fat and that's why you have this ball underneath the underneath the mouth on her chin just like so and Oh yes, definitely, Mike. Painting in light and shade, exactly, because that's what—that's our subject. Our subject isn't Anne Margaret, though she is incredibly beautiful. She's not the main subject. Light is. So, why not? Why not attack the, the lighter areas right now? Why not? We're gonna wait. Right? Why are we going to wait? We're not going to wait. And we're going to steer away from her teeth. It's always a tricky spot. Let's make this a little light, just like so. Now, let's see. I think that would be it. But you know what? No, that could wait. I was thinking about doing some white pastel in her hair. But I really feel that could wait. All right, so we're gonna put this aside. Whoops. And now we're gonna come back in with my detail mixture and extreme paint treat arrow. And we're gonna start working on her face a little bit more. So let's make that happen, everybody. And now you wanna make sure you don't oversaturate. This is not the Canson paper by color. This is not the color line paper by Canson. This is definitely a little more absorbent, and it will absorb like a paper towel. You think good, but not good because what could happen is that it could just get oversaturated and soggy, and you know, pretty bad. Mike says, by bringing the light forward now, you then know how much in the shadow needs to go back, which controls the depth underpainting. Definitely, you kind of, I'm kind of like keying the work, right, Mike? And that makes a big difference. And yes, I'm coming in in pastel, and I'm quite detailed in pastel. However, this gives me an advantage. And still keeping that hair stencil on there, I'm keeping everything as clean as possible. And even if my drawing was off later in pastel, 
which is a huge advantage to, let's say, working in straight airbrush. Where's my mono eraser? It's behind something. So can't find a mono. Let's come over here. And you're always going to be correcting your drawing, right? Don't worry about that. We're always going to be correcting. It's never perfect. And now let's work on her nose. That three-dimensional quality of her nose. Distance is your friend. like maybe four inches, I'm going to force myself to stay light. So no matter what I do at four inches, it's still going to be light as long as I don't press back too far with the trigger. But that's not going to happen. If it's, I need more detail, of course I have to come closer. I'm looking at her head with the large shapes right now, not concerned with the smaller shapes. They'll come. Moving around, looking for the larger forms. This is where the torn paper always is a good technique instead of using your freehand shield and you don't want to make it look like a robot. She's not a robot. So I'm just going to be far away and I'm just going to use that torn paper and it keeps everything very, very organic. Now it's interesting here with her Cupid's bow. I'm just going to make sure that I'm seeing it correctly before I commit to any shadows. So let's see, Steve says, can I ask why have you chosen that color of paper? Well, you know, great question. I do like the fact that it's a very fleshy color and uh, Anne Margaret, she has these kind of rich reddish pink tones all over the place. So I think that would be a really nice kind of glow behind and still it has a nice mid tone. So it enables me to you know, easily find the lights and darks. But yes, if I was working on, let's say, when I do my colored airbrush paintings, I will actually tone, the, tone my board to a flesh color. And people say, well, why would you tone your... Because the flesh color, that mid-tone flesh color, is sort of the uh, main color, and then everything I could adjust to that. And so I like doing that.
Now her teeth are interesting. I want to make sure I get these correct. And let's see here. Now in the end of painting, you want to make sure that you're not too dark. I also want to make sure that I'm getting some of the light that's in her teeth here. This comes down. This is coming down a little bit more. Never believe your drawing, right? Always double, triple check. When you get later down the line, you have to, because then it's too late for reconstruction, right? You can do the reconstruction in the early going, but you really can't down the line. Now, I am doing some erasing here, but you know what? I could go over it in pastel, but this is just kind of, you know, my uh, force of habit, you know, good habits, keeping everything clean. Ah, thank you. Thank you so much, Steve. That was a great question. See, right here is called the, the corrugated super silly, right here. And these are the two muscles that kind of, when you frown, you kind of have these two muscles that go on each side of the, uh, the brow of your nose there. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that thus far. Let me see if anything I could do more. I think I'm pretty happy. Here we go. So, so right now we can lift this off. And we'll just take this off and you can see you know, it's kind of, this camera is making my uh, picture look radioactive here. It's much more orange than what I have here. Let me see if I can adjust. Let me see, uh, right here. Come over here. And let's see. be a moment. I have to go to effects. Color and light. There we go. Okay, so we have to look for temperature. So this is definitely more on the orange side. So we'll do this here. Yeah, that's more like it. Probably like right around there. There we go. This. Okay, that looks a lot better, definitely. All right, so right now, what do you want? To, what do I want to do? Let's see if we can work on our hair a little bit. And I do have a hair stencil. So it's funny, you know. This is. I bet you were all expecting like pastel work for a pastel live stream. Well, not today because it's the underpainting, and the airbrush is the best tool in the world. I don't care who you are. Throwing down the gauntlet, gauntlet. I like to know anyone who thinks that there's anything better than uh, airbrush for an underpainting, because that would be just silly. And there are a lot of silly people out there, especially in the oil painting world. Let's see. So I want to paint her hair. But again, I want to keep it clean. That's like, ask anyone who's been airbrushing a long time, the, one of your main concerns is just keeping things clean, right? That's basically like a full-time job. Put this over here. 
let's see. I just cut these so they're all over the place. And what I need You know, the funny thing is, is that these stencils are invisible. Wow, I think I have something that's even better than anything else. This is really cool. Move this out of the way. Sometimes I... Do some good things. Let's see. Let's put it this way. I pray to God to do a good job, and sometimes He helps me do an even better job than I thought. Let's see. All right. See that? That covering her face. It's covering her dress. It's covering. Uh, the background look at that best of all worlds here but I have to line it up so it's no good unless I line it up see how all these different things kind of connect to everybody you know it's like we can't cut any corners anywhere it's just there's no there's no way around it No corner cutting. I'd like to cut a corner here and there. I mean, I'm lazy like like a lot of people. I'm not lazy, but have lazy tendencies. And believe me, I have to stop myself. Like, hey, you know, you have to make sure that you uh, dot every I and cross every T. If you want extraordinary results, you have to give extraordinary effort. So let's see what I missed here. Um, oh, Brad's here. That's great. So that's fantastic. And so glad you're here, sir. And uh, so everyone's saying, Brad, so glad you're, you're recovering. That's exciting. All right, definitely. You walked a quarter mile. Oh, Brad is like the bionic man or something. I'm, I'm serious. He's incredible. All right. See, now I have everything covered. And let's work on her beautiful signature hair. And we'll just come over here. I'm going to start with the large shapes, because why not, right? No, actually, you have to start with the, with the large shapes. It's not like, it's not like a preference, you know? It's, that's just the way to do it. You start with the larger shapes. Uh, the, the shapes that are landmark shapes that help define the rest of the painting. Big changes coming pretty soon with my website, which is going to be very exciting. I'm um, very exciting. A lot of work in the uh, in progress so that is uh, something um, you know getting to this next level I'm a little bit nervous you know because it's, it's a whole new frontier I didn't think I was you know that I could do something like that so that's something I'm working and praying about right now it's, uh, it's very exciting So just concentrating on the large shapes of this beautiful Anne Margaret here. And you see we have the face covered. Have her face covered. And I have to be so careful not to oversaturate everything here. So I'm kind of cheating in the sense that this is a commission. 
So I'm definitely not killing two birds with one stone, but taking care of two birds with one one handful of of seeds. I like that better than the killing of the birds of analogy. Okay, so bring this down. So you see I'm still going very light because I have the detail mixture that is four drops of detail mixture with six drops of water. And what does that mean in English? A large dilution and but perfect for working out large areas and uh, not going too dark. Nameless says, sounds rough, Brad. Oh, okay, cool. So everyone is uh, giving you good good advice and tips and everything. And accolades, which is fantastic, Brad. So love to see that. Okay, again. So I'm just kind of squinting my eyes, try and see these large shapes. And again, you want these uh, magnets to be close to the edge of the shield. This way, you're not getting under spray. This way, you're not getting under spray. have been seeing that Drew is actually teaching a class over in Italy and he's showing some really amazing photos pretty cool see that's that's amazing that shows you that there's always hope for someone like me if I work hard maybe I can achieve something like that one day I, I hope to achieve something like that basically what I'm doing is just setting up an overall tonal structure loosely I might add but still to give me a nice blueprint so when I do come in pastel a lot of my cares are already addressed. some really interesting large dark areas down here but first I have to get the darkest area to at least establish a tonal relationship not trying to get those values correct but just to establish value relationships and it wasn't built in the day Rome that is so I'm just going to slowly just build the large shapes. Remember, you have to paint the helmet before you paint the hair. And that's what I'm doing right now. Just painting that helmet, everybody. Eventually we'll get rid of all those pencil lines. I went to work in the face and it's covered. That's pretty funny. Again, you see where these, uh, these bright light areas are and you kind of want to paint around them.
We're going to go ahead and paint that beautiful green behind her. That's going to be exciting for the background. So I pray I do a good job. I'm going to work my hardest and I'm going to be as diligent as possible. Oh, this is actually not pastel mat. This is actually uh, a paper by De La Rowney. So I'll get the exact one. It might be like, uh, I could get the exact name. I'll get that for you guys later. But yeah, it's it's a maybe like, like maybe an 80 pound pastel paper. It's really good though. I mean, but you know, I, like I said, I've been working in pastel since I was 19 years old. And the thing is, with pastel, you have to make sure that, like you play, like in football or baseball, you play, sometimes you play to your opponent, right? If your opponent's a defensive-minded team, then you have to think differently if you're playing an opponent that's an offensive-minded team. So the same thing, if I'm working on my own wood panel, I'm a little more carefree when it comes to layers. However, any amount of layers. If I'm working on paper such as this, I'm a little more guarded as to how, I'm, how I apply my layers because I don't have as many layers. But the advantage is, is that it's faster, it's easy to ship, it's easy to frame. And uh, so I, I do this a lot when I have commissions, I'll, I'll work on paper. I don't believe there's a difference in quality, just a difference in approach. But, you know, if I'm doing like a long, uh, like painting for myself, I'm going to use wood panel with my marble dust mixture. Oh, cool. And uh, so let's see, who else had a question? Uh, definitely, that would be cool if there was like a little bell that whenever I was alerted. But usually like things like, like here you can see like in this particular, you know, the underpainting stage, it's pretty in depth, you know. Uh, I mean, I'm pretty engrossed in the work right now. But you guys always understand. You're very understanding. Just like you want to follow the grain of the skin, you want to find the grain of the hair, right? Sometimes I believe it's 50-50 equal importance and uh, getting the direction of the hairs, including with, you know, the size of the shape or the direction of the hairs are so, so important. concentrate on the darkest areas here. And believe me, I'm not getting to the dark value. I'm just establishing establishing that value relationships here. And I can't go as dark as I want because I'll oversaturate the paper. And we don't want to do that. some more of these dark accents here and there. Right here I do see a dark accent right here. Over here. Might as well do it in the underpainting and this way it's a lot easier to see and to establish when you are doing with the pastel later down the line. So you know People might think, well, what does airbrush, what does pastel have to do with airbrush? A lot, because it's an option for you, you know, and all your airbrush knowledge 
is really going to work because the airbrush and the pastel go perfectly together. Yes, exactly. That happy place zone, Stephen, definitely. Yeah, but that would be great if they had something like that, like an alert, you know? That would be great. I'm just going to do an overall value here. All right, let's lift this up and see what we have. But it's really important for you all to see the importance of the underpainting and how that is going to speed up your painting, give your painting a lot more definition and a, a, a linear structure that is going to help you throughout the painting to the very last highlight at the end. So as you can see, there she is, and we're just continuing to, uh, let me focus her a little bit better. Bring this up. This paper is sure doing a number on the, uh, the focusing here. There we go, that's pretty good. Okay. okay. Love that sultriness, that sultry look that she has. So I'm going to look for something else here. See if I can find it. did not make that as of yet no worries I'm just going to go ahead and just start painting some of this tonal structure on her blouse here and it's much easier to do it with an underpainting than trying to do it with the pastel I could do it with the pastel but why not make things easier okay so right now if I look at her dress we have this really nice uh, these little shapes that are very cool and so I really want to paint them in so I'm just going to uh, let's see right so right here I'll just come in very lightly and start painting some of these in and this way I can erase the pencil lines First work on some of these larger darks that I see here. It's right under the hair, causing this kind of cast shadow. One second rule. Remember, there's never a point where the one second rule is not your key principle. And the one second rule is just a unit of measure. If you're going to paint for three seconds, look for three seconds. If you're going to paint for two seconds, look for two seconds, and then paint, right? So that's so crucial. That's going to keep yourself in the game, not thinking about, you know, what's for dinner, you know, did, uh, did you turn off the iron, you know, all that other stuff that could get in the way. Let me come back here. So right here, we're going to do a pencil line. There's this dark that comes right from, from here and kind of comes down. I'm just going to establish that. Take 
take your time with the freehand shield just wait until you actually have that edge and still perpendicular not parallel keeps me from making mistakes as you can see I'm doing a large tonal structure first of the sweater see if I have any questions hey Zavi good to see you how are you <laughs> Thanks, Sabi. I appreciate that. And Colette says she looks great. Thank you so much. And Steve says uh, uh, he agrees, Steve, but the happy place is hard for him to find, chasing that zone. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's really important to kind of, uh, you know, shut the world out a little bit when you paint. It's crucial, actually. I never had much of a happy life a lot of times, and my art has always been my sanctuary, so to speak. And so when I'm painting, I could usually shut out the world. Thank God, too, because, you know, it's important. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to calm down with the blouse. I'll do that off camera because that's long and boring technique but what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to accentuate her eyes work on them a little more eyebrows definitely get the direction of the hairs that's going to really be crucial if you don't do that you may get a likeness but it's going to appear that something's off and something will be off to oversaturate and always come back. worrying about the big shapes right now. We want Anne to appear. We don't want to force Anne by trying to get little tiny details and wondering why it's not looking like her. Beautiful cast shadow over here from her hair. Let me put that in. Thank you so much, Brad and, and John Payne. I really appreciate that. <laughs> you guys are saying you would call it done. That's funny. Oh, it's so much farther to go, my friends.
So I'm getting the impression of Anne, right? That's what I'm trying to do. Get the impression of Anne Margaret. A lot of that has to do with hitting these dark accents here and there. So, let's go ahead and establish some of some of this. So let's look and let's see if we could get a really nice light fleshy color here. And I'm going to use the pastel pencils in the first couple parts of this live stream. Wait a minute. Over here seems fine. Okay. So the one I'm using right now is the Faber-Castell 132. And I am just going to lightly establish this area right here. Now the great thing about pastel is we'll cover those pencil lines no problem, but you know, we're always trying to be clean, right? You know, so cleanliness is really important. It's a good habit to have. Bring this over. here make sure you get rid of weird lines as they present themselves the pastel pencil I'm using is uh, pit pastel by favorite castel I love them I love the colors I love the way that they uh, cover the pastel pastel paper or any board they have great coverage Really good, uh, light, fast, beautiful pigment load. Look how I beautifully go over that uh, cast shadow right there. So right now I'm establishing these little bit of dark areas right now. And then I'm going to come in with an even lighter pastel color. But what great, great foundation I have because I came in with the airbrush and worked on an underpainting. And as I go, I'm eventually getting rid of those training wheels, which are the the pencil lines. have to be even more careful than the cans on color line paper because this is even more delicate. And of course as you're going you're going to always have something that is not working correctly. I don't care who you are. There's always something in every painting that you have to struggle with. Once in a while you get away with it and you don't have any struggles and you just kind of feel like guilty because you didn't have any struggles in the painting. You know, you're like, wait a minute, that's not supposed to happen. It doesn't happen too often, but I don't enjoy it. You know, when I have a painting that goes too smoothly, it's almost like I'm kind of like weirded out by it. You. So Brad says no one's really doing this technique, so I appreciate that. Yeah, this is something that 
kind of was born out of a need, you know? And also of my knowledge of pastel and how could that knowledge not make it into the airbrush, I mean the pastel and the airbrush, how could those things not come together? Look how cute she is. Keep in mind of the anatomical structures that you do see here. My knowledge of the anatomy of the face, the muscles, the bones, and the fat. You know, we all have like very distinct fat areas. And they're there to actually protect the gaps that are caused where the bands of muscles will leave gaps. And the fat is actually there to protect those areas of gaps. Hey, Mr. Steve Asquiz, how are you? Great to see you, sir. Oh, what a nice surprise. I'm so glad you're here. And Mr. Steve Lang says he hasn't started pastels yet, but will soon, definitely. And yeah, so I'm looking forward. Steve and Brad are two of my students. So yeah, so I started with Brad and uh, Steve is down the line coming up, which is great, you know. Uh, Squeeze did an amazing painting of uh, Sparrow and it just came out incredible. So uh, uh, Squeeze, Bob is doing some amazing airbrush and pastel work. It is just incredible to see and a pleasure. And see how, how light I come in? This is very much how an airbrush artist would come in. You know, they would come in very light and they would slowly build up the values. Okay, so now I'm gonna look for something a bit lighter. Don't know if I'm gonna find it though. What I may do is first come over this area with the white and then from that maybe actually maybe come in lighter here or lighter pressure in the lighter areas and then I'll come in with a white afterwards and I'm gonna try one area I'm just gonna glaze notice where I'm holding the pastel pencil really far out there Okay, it seems to be working. So you want to be a chess player. You want to think several moves ahead. So there we go. So you can see that's doable. But you see how I went in one direction? That's actually counterproductive. So basically what I want you to do is to kind of do little circular motions. But hold it way back because you want a lot, lot less pressure than we did the dark areas. So hold it all my, almost at the end, and then what you're going to do is just kind of glide that over the pastel paper, and now we can come back in and do these circular motions and kind of pull out those lights, because we just did the mid-tones, right? And you don't want to rush through this. You want to take your time. Ah, oh, thanks, uh, Bob. Bob says I'm leading the way. I'm, I am very honored that you said that. Thank you for that, sir. And uh, let's see. So very cool. So we have a really nice, uh, a nice group today. Thank you, everybody, for hanging. So I'm just going to continue this, going in with the light pressure here in the, for the lighter areas, holding it way back here. Very light pressure. Now I'm not concerned with the highlights just yet, everybody. We'll get there.
let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. So you can see what I'm doing here. Just kind of very lightly. Circular motions. Why circular motions with doing pastel pencils? Because you don't want any lines that you're going to have to fight, you're going to have to fight later. So with pastels, you don't have to worry about blue shift. You can put a dark over a light, a light over a dark. It makes no difference. Just keep paying attention as you're working. And don't worry about blending just yet. Think of it like sketching in color right now. And let's work on those lips. So what I want to do is I want to take, uh, if I can only find my mono eraser. I have a lot of papers on my desk. There it is. Okay. So let's get rid of some of these details. I, I have enough com uh, confidence that I can hit some of these details myself later. Okay, so now we're going to look for that red. We don't have to get the color right away we can arrive at the color. This is a very strong color. A little bit on the orange side. Let me see if I can see something a little more magenta. Don't lose your drawing. So I'm going to sharpen this. See if I can even sharpen it a little bit better with this little baby pencil sharpener. Oh yeah, that's not bad. Okay. One second roll. Just keep keep your attention. I think I would make good uh, a good person to work at a you know disarming bombs. with the airbrush here. I just want to make sure I reestablish the corner of her mouth here. Here is where I may go ahead and just kind of blend that in because it looks really horrible. Not that I don't have patience, it's just if it looks that horrible, I'm going to address it. I'm going to use some foam core. There we go. Okay. Let's zoom out. 
There we go. Okay, Ann, she's looking okay. Patty, how are you? Great to see you. I'm so glad you're here. That is great. Uh, Mike says you can mimic that hand motion, but only kneel by nearly overdosing on caffeine. <laughs> That's cool. And see, blending that out really was more edifying for myself. Okay, so establishing the face a little bit. Let's see if we can start working on the hair a little bit. Let's block in the hair. Why not, right? So let's see. So we have this really beautiful, elegant, uh, orangey color. So I'm just going to look for that color here. Pink orange. Yeah, definitely. Also, kind of a nice red with kind of a burgundy flavor, right? So, I think that's okay. All right, let's just go to town. I'm going to start with these darks here. That's the great thing about pastel. You can go from dark to light, light to dark. It doesn't matter. How you doing, my friend? Great to see you. How's everything? Oh, wow. Ray is one of my first students on the internet. A very talented artist, uh, a veteran of the United States Navy, just all around great teacher and a good, good friend. So I'm glad to see you, Ray. And uh, so that is so fantastic. What a pleasure to see you today. And. Uh, Thank you so much. I appreciate that, sir. So, yeah, you know, it's, uh, you know, my students, I, I really care about my students, you know. I mean, my students' growth and everything. And, and also, I learn from my students so much as well. Let's see if we can... It's always in our best interest to get rid of the pencil lines when we can. Uh, thanks so much, Mr. Steve, for hanging out. It's always a pleasure. And that wonderful, amazing, uh, that painting with the snow in the stream is one of my all-time favorite paintings of all time so really love it my friend so I'm so glad you're working on that that just is just amazing just an amazing piece of artwork we'll be in the museum one day won't mark my words very light with my application here. And you see I have all these really amazing colors. Erase as you go those pencil lines, but they're, remember, they're still your training wheels, so you don't want to get rid of the training wheels too early. And notice that as I'm working on the large shapes, I'm not really overly concerned, right? I'm not overly concerned with 
all the details just yet. Just looking for that overall tonal framework. Fantastic. So Ray now is apparently working with Holbein acrylic inks. Fantastic. And he does all his monochrome work with sepia first and then coloring. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, I can't, I gotta check out what you're doing lately. I want to see your work, sir. Yeah, I heard good things about the Holbein inks, that's for sure. reddish going on right here. Many, 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 many layers to go, everybody, so no worries. So I'm going to stop at 10. I think we got really far today though, right? Definitely. Let's see how I'm blocking out those large shapes, especially those dark accents. They really are great anchor points and uh, really go a long way of uh, having a, a point of departure. So off camera, I'm going to work on the designs of her dress or sweater. And then I'm going to do that with the airbrush and the black and white airbrush. And then I'm going to come in and work on those beautiful greens. So one of the things that really struck me about this particular photo is those beautiful greens with the, uh, the pinks of her, of her complexion and those auburny orange colors of her hair and the green of the background, wow. Being Irish, it's almost like instinctively I'm drawn to this, right? So it's pretty funny. Brad, have a Brad says, looking great, Tim. Thanks for another feed. Have a great night, sir. Thank you so much for hanging out. And I'm glad to hear you're on that road of recovery. So that's so cool to see. Notice Tim is in not any rush here, right? Just hitting these dark accents right over here, giving nice nice point of departure.
thank you so much, Colette. Colette says she's looking amazing. Uh, Mr. Lang says he's, she's looking amazing, and I uh, really appreciate that. And uh, no, it's my pleasure. Thanks everyone for hanging out and uh, spending time with me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Patrick, for the Chupra Super Chat sticker. That means a lot, sir. So I'm excited, and uh, it just, um, it's really cool to hang out with you guys. So, so yeah, so thank you everybody for uh, coming and hanging out today for this uh, pastel live stream. A uh, little bit different, working on paper, but I want you to, I don't always work on paper, but I want to show everyone that you can always uh, work on paper, you can work on the board, you're not limited, right? So you never want to be limited, and I never want to give any kind of dogma, you know? And thank you, Squeeze Zavi, and, and thank you so much, uh, Nameless, better than the reference, he says. Thank you so much for that. You're the best. So Pat, Patty, everybody, Blue, thank you so much for hanging out, and thank you for the wonderful compliment. So everybody, so not bad. So as any closing questions before I go? So this was fun. Uh, had I had, like I said, uh, making all of the acetate uh, overlays and everything took a little bit longer than I thought, you know. Oh, Mike says, just realized Tim's not wearing the ink clingers gear tonight. Yeah, which really helps uh, support my whole um, kind of running behind today. <laughs> so take care, everybody. Oh, which brand of pastels do I use? So in here, I'm using at this stage is the uh, is the Pit Pastels pastel pencils. You can get a set of sixty. That's usually a good set to uh, to start with. So that's really cool. So the Airbrush India inks over a tight drawing, and then from that you go ahead, you put in the India inks for the tonal values, and then go over with the pastel pencils. And then later we'll go with different brands as we get more and more layers. So everyone, thanks so much. Uh, oh, that's a good idea, definitely. Hanging the, the inks in the background, great idea. Thank you so much. Faber Castell, uh, Pastel, uh, these are amazing, these uh, pastel pencils. I've been using them for a long, long time and they do everything I want. They feel like pastels in a pencil form, and that's basically what you want. You don't want them too hard. You want them to act like pastels, but be in pencil form where you can really get that detail, you know? That's so true. <laughs> Thanks, guys. So, everyone, take care. You guys are all the best. And uh, great to see you there, Ray. Thank you so much for hanging out. I can't wait till we get to have a conversation, uh, Mr. Ray. So, everyone... I will see you Wednesday night, 9.30, for the Airbrush live stream. I'm going to be finishing up the portrait of Frida Kahlo, which is going to be a lot of fun. Take care, everybody.